Okay, everybody, welcome. It's Lionel, tech lead and partner at West Vault. And today we have a special event, special, really special. Uh, not many times do we actually have the founder of a PHP framework and uh, the guy who is bringing PHP back uh, coming to us on, uh, I guess, a channel exclusive, David Connolly. David is... Uh, I came across your uh, framework actually from one of my uh, subscribers who commented in one of the comments about to check out uh, this new framework called TronGate and, uh, you know, the tons of PHP frameworks. And I looked at it and I saw the group. First of all, the name is really groovy. And then I saw the no BS stuff. Uh, on the chat, uh, on the on your web page, and I said we have to get this guy in. He is bringing PHP back to the, you know, we always on my channel we talk about KISS, keep it simple, stupid, and I really love it. So uh, first of all, let's give me at this point. Uh, you built TronGate on PHP, is that correct, David? That is indeed yes. Yeah. So. I mean, you, you know, on, on, on YouTube and around the world, lots of so-called experts are saying that PHP is dying and, and it's going away. Why, why did you invest all this time to build a framework on PHP? Well, um, the funny thing is, you know, if you, if you have a look around YouTube and you subscribe to web development channels, you'd be forgiven for thinking that PHP was on its last legs and absolutely finished and some boring has-been thing. But the truth of the matter is that PHP absolutely dominates the server-side space. In fact, uh, PHP has a monopoly on server-side technology that's comparable to Google's monopoly of search engines, if you look at the percentages. And in fact, on my channel, um, I, I, I can give you a link if, if you want. Yeah, we'll uh, drop it I, in I there. I can give you a link to an article. Well, I'll give you a link to an article, don't worry about my channel, um, that goes into this, gives you the numbers. And in fact, over the last 10 years, far from declining, PHP has become more popular. More popular, uh, that's against the, uh, you know, that's the kind of stuff that we don't talk around, you know, a few heretic channels out there. So uh, why, why, yeah. why did you come up with a framework? I mean, most people would say, okay, I like the language, I'll use Laravel and be done with it. You had to go ahead and make your own thing. Well, you're just not happy with everybody else. Yeah, yeah. So why do we need another PHP framework? Well, I think that there's two reasons why. First of all, there are a gazillion PHP frameworks. And funny thing is, you know, about six months ago, my friend Derek and I, he's a developer, we found a website that listed the top 150 PHP frameworks. <laughs> and we went, we went through every single one of them and checked them out just to see what they were all about. And our discoveries were quite remarkable. It turns out that more than 95% of the PHP frameworks, at least that were listed here, are in a state of neglect. Take Codeigniter, for example. Codeigniter went seven years without even having the homepage being updated in any significant way. Now, I believe they had an update in November, but I'm speaking to you now on March, and that's allegedly a top three framework. So most of the PHP frameworks, you know, those hundreds and gazillions of frameworks that are out there, well, they're actually kind of dead. They're not doing much. But secondly, and I think this is perhaps more interesting, there's a kind of quiet revolution going on in web development, not just PHP, but web development generally. And people are now looking at the way frameworks are constantly being rewritten. And they're asking, well, who actually benefits from this? Take Laravel, for example. Until very recently, Laravel had a six-month release schedule. 
So that means every six months, they were committed to a new version. And by definition, a new version means breaking changes. Oh, yeah. Imagine buying a new Mercedes-Benz car and the guy says, I'll see you in six months because that's when your new engine's due, right? Mercedes would be out of business within two years if they had that type of business model. But that has become the norm, not only in PHP, but sadly in the whole web development industry. Oh, yeah. And so developers are starting to wonder, and it's not just PHP, even in the JavaScript community, I'm seeing a lot of signs that developers are wondering who is actually benefiting from all of these rewrites. And the bizarre thing is, it's mind-blowing, but nobody has written a PHP framework yet that I'm aware of that has just been made for people who want to build an app, launch it, and leave it online for five years. I cannot find that framework. And so... That's one of the reasons. But the other reason, which is more PHP specific, is that you'll probably know that since about 2015, PHP has gone through a lot of change. And now we have these bizarre norms where people are using the composer packages, PSR4 autoloading triad. And there are a lot of developers who are now asking the question, is this really the best way to load up stuff is there another way and every benchmark known to humanity suggests that maybe there is another way yeah npm uh, like they, they pick up this bad habit from npm which loaded all the javascript over there so th exactly. yeah that's, that's yeah. very interesting but let, let's take a step backwards let's do an origin story let tell our viewers right what's your background when do you oh, decide dude, to dude, become I... <laughs> you know something it's the one question i'm dreading because if i had a decent answer i would make up some fairy tale like everybody <laughs> does and somebody who knows me would say that's not what happened at all anyway there's not much to say I i've been involved in web development actually that's not accurate i was going to say since 1996 but the phrase web development only kind of appeared around about 2000. Yeah. So yeah. I've, been, I've, been, I've been involved in this type of stuff for a, rather a long time. I never started using PHP though. Never started doing real web development until about 2003. But were you uh, a formally, yeah. did you learn computer science, uh, you know, from the beginning or would it like, are, uh, are you like the, 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 the homegrown garage baker? Like, yeah. How do you get involved in this? Well, you know, I actually did, uh, when I went to uni, I, I did engineering at first. And they make you do a variety of courses. One of the courses being computing, you know? Yep. And uh, I, I couldn't stand it. I, I never enjoyed it at all. I was so bad at it. Uh, they had these stickers on the table a sticker that told you what the F buttons were for. And one of them said go. And I remember everybody was laughing at me because I'm at the table pressing this, basically a piece of paper, wondering why it's not starting. The lecturer, the lecturer used to write these uh, things on the board and he'd say, today we're going to talk about an if statement. And he would write a big if this size and I'd write a big if on the notes. And I remember the night before the exam, I'd look at my notes and it would just say F. And then I had no clue. <laughs> what, what were you coding back then? What, what language was that? Oh, Fortran 77. Can you oh believe my it? goodness. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I wasn't, honestly, I think I got my final project from my waste paper bin. And I'm pretty sure I scored zero on the exam. I'm pretty sure I got zero. So I, I got out of that really quickly. Kept the bare minimum of other subjects to stay in the door. And then I got a degree in philosophy and English oh my literature. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Technical. well, that, that is the, the, after that, that's what a lot of us are doing on, on YouTube, becoming philosophy. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, <laughs> as I said before, I wanted to have deep thoughts about delivering pizzas, you know? <laughs> yeah, but now you have deep thoughts on PHP. So how, yeah. how do you come across PHP? Uh, you know, the PHP is like the... Uh, hush hush illegal stuff you know dark arts 
of of mm. the the web development. They never teach it in university. So how did you come across this thing? How did I come across PHP? Oh, geez. Well, what I remember is I got involved in, I would have to call it web design in 1996. My brother was doing all of the intelligent stuff and I was for the most part selling websites, you know. After the dot-com bubble uh, crashed or whatever in 2000, the marketplace was totally dead. Uh, nobody wanted to know about the web and it was a, it was a very miserable time. And I, w I actually went away from web development for a, a, a short while. But then I, I went for a long walk and I thought, man, you know, I was kind of happy doing that. But I realized that if I was going to be competitive, I'd have to bring something else to the table. It's not enough to just say, hey, would you like a website, you know? And uh, I, I, I remember I stumbled into a bookshop. I saw... Um, That's I also it. old school, everybody, like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I stumbled into a bookshop. I saw a book, Sam's Learn PHP in 24 Hours. And I thought, that looks good. And it took me 10 months to get through it. <laughs> <laughs> I never managed the 24 hours. But that was how it started, you know, just staggering into a bookshop. But what, what, why PHP? Like, was there any other language out there back in the day? Back then, the... There was Perl, PHP, I know. Well, back then it was Perl and ASP was being pushed as well. Yeah. And... Uh, I wasn't entirely scientific about this, but I could see that all of the benchmarks were in favor of PHP. There was no license shenanigans. It was completely as open source as you could get. And there was a sense that this is going to be the next up and coming thing. And you could feel it. It was almost like the way crypto feels these days, you know? You just knew that PHP is going to be big. And I remember going in and seeing prospects who were hell-bent on going ahead with things like ESP and saying to them, I'm telling you, man, PHP is the way to go. Look at these charts, see? And uh, I knew that it was just faster and better, and I managed to convince a few people to try it. So wow. you're welcome, PHP community. Yes, I do take credit. <laughs> From the early days, the <laughs> yeah, origin of this. There you go. Exactly what we need, yeah. So to it, From fast forward... Uh, you've yep. been coding. What, what, what were you doing before you decided to become a framework superhero? What, what were you coding in? And, um, well, as I, I started 1996, but I wasn't really coding. I was just watching my brother who was studying computing. I looked over his shoulder and I, he was doing a website and I said, that's amazing, you know? And he was like, oh, cool. I says, how much are you being paid? And he said, uh, well, nothing. It's just, I'm just doing a site for somebody. And I says, I bet you I could sell those. And he said, no way. And I says, I bet you I could. Then I says, how much would you give me if I sold one? And he said, I'd give you 50%. And I said, okay, you've got a deal. And the next day I got dollar equivalent of six and a half thousand dollars worth of sales. Oh, that's that's what the mid-90s was good. like. That's pretty good. That was, yeah. I mean, that is the that is the equivalent of uh, crypto today, you know. I, uh, real money, you know, in the pocket. So those of insane. you guys out there, yes. Back in the day, you know, if you could do PHP, you get money instantly. Yeah, and it was really easy. It was nothing to do with charisma or anything like that. All I did is I print, printed out a bunch of leaflets um, I think the leaflet said mega cheap web pages. I never <laughs> knew the difference. I never knew the difference between a page and a website. And I just walked up the street and put them in the doors. And back then there was a one in 10 buy rate. Wow. Can you believe it? Yeah. So you, you could post 10 leaflets and somebody would buy a site. It was incredible. The only problem is... If anybody's wondering, where's the castle and the helicopters? Yeah. The only problem is some poor sinner had to build the thing. And that was that was a big problem, you know? Yeah, they were not... The Git wasn't around back those days. You know, scripts weren't tested. 
You couldn't, you know, have everything popping out very quickly. Everything had to be. Uh, I remember we I used the front page when I first started. It was slow going back then. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what's funny? You know what's funny? When you look at things like Front Page and Dreamweaver, and there's one or two videos you can see on YouTube, and you just look at it, right? Forget about everything and just look at it. And then have a look at all of that composer stuff and whatnot. You know, to the untrained eye, I dare say, in many ways, that stuff looks more ahead than some of the stuff that we're doing today. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. And in some respects, I think we've kind of gone backwards. And I'm not doing some good old days thing. I love PHP. It's getting better and better and better. But some of the things that are happening uh, in web development, to me, I'm not entirely sure if it's a step forward, you know? Uh, well, so, I think they added more complexity into it. But you're right. You know, Dreamweaver, back, I, I use Dreamweaver at a bootleg version of that thing and, and it was pretty advanced for the day you could flip it between uh html the visual part and then flip to the other side to look at the yeah. code to work on it that, that's pretty um you know uh really web flowy uh pretty very very ahead of its day you know oh absolutely and you can completely imagine somebody like squarespace or something coming out with that and guys like us saying oh that's amazing look what it does <laughs> and yet 